Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Risha and this is For the Love of Classics. In today's video, I'm going to share my top five favorite female classic authors. Since the month of March is celebrated as Women's Month, I want to talk about some of my favorite female authors. I want to celebrate their work and encourage you to read their work if you haven't done it already. The five authors I'm going to talk about today are just some authors which I really enjoyed reading works from. There have been a lot of women in history whose books never got published. There were women whose books were published but we don't have those books with us today. And then there are books which were published back then and they're still available today but I haven't been able to read those books yet. There are so many female authors which deserve more recognition and more uh, appreciation. This video is just a small step which I want to take in order to appreciate these female writers and I'm going to be recommending some of their books which I absolutely loved and I'm sure you guys would love too. So the first author which I would like to talk about today is my fifth favorite female classic writer and it's Mary Shelley. I did not know a lot about Mary Shelley. I usually never read about the author's life when I read their books but I know a bit about her because I watched a film which was based on Mary Shelley's life and the things which I learned about her made me appreciate her book and her writing even more. So Mary Shelley's father was a philosopher and his mother was also a feminist and a writer. Uh, Mary Shelley's mother Mary Wollstonecraft wrote non-fiction I have read Mary Shelley's mother's nonfiction, which was uh, Mary the Wrongs of Women by Mary Wollstonecraft and I did really enjoy that as well. But Mary Shelley's mother actually passed away when Mary Shelley was born and later on Mary Shelley's father uh, married someone else and Mary Shelley had a very turbulent relationship with her stepmother. Mary actually uh, eloped uh, or ran away to live with Percy Shelley who was a very famous poet at the time and while they were together they traveled to Europe and they also met Lord Byron there who was uh, pretty wild. Uh, on their trip to Scotland with Lord Byron um, they all decided to sit down and write a horror story for fun. Uh, it was sort of like a competition between all these writers and Frankenstein was the story which Mary Shelley wrote and the struggle she underwent when she had to publish this book and when no one was willing to recognize that this was her work that part of her life actually spoke out um, the most to me and made me really appreciate her book as well. I read this book a while back but I remember I really was surprised by how much I enjoyed it because I wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much as I did. The thing is Mary Shelley was only 18 years old when she wrote the book so that's even more fascinating and amazing. So Mary Shelley is definitely an inspiring woman and um, the book is amazing so I would definitely recommend you pick it up and read it if you haven't done it already and also give the film Mary Shelley a watch if you are able to because that film just gave such a good insight into her life and I got to learn so much more about Mary Shelley from that film. So the author who's on the fourth position on my list of top five favorite female classic writers is Elizabeth Gaskell and Honestly, I have no idea about her life, who she lived with, what was going on. But what I do know is that I loved every single book of her which I have picked up so far. So I have read North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. Brilliant book, amazing story, great writing. Then I read Mary Barton, brilliant. Later on, I read uh, Wives and Daughters amazing book and last year during the lockdown I read the Cranford Chronicles and that book just was such a positive happy book to read um, it just did so much for me right I was sad I was upset I was lonely but that book just made me realize about human connection how we're all together how we have to take care of each other her books give you such warm happy comfy cozy vibes. Elizabeth Gaskell's personality must have been warm and cozy because that just is what I think of when I think of Gaskell. I, I imagine someone who's warm and cozy and very welcoming and 
positive but the truth is that I don't know much about her. The Collins Classics edition of North and South does have a paragraph or so about the author and it says that Elizabeth Gaskell was raised by her aunt in a village in England where she rubbed shoulders with a broad cross section of society. This exposure to diverse and varied sectors of society is reflected in her literature, especially when compared to writers like Jane Austen who had been preoccupied with writing stories about the English upper class. Gaskell chose to write about the working class and the emerging middle class with particular attention paid to the role of women in society. And that's another thing, the reason why I enjoy her stories so much is because they are about women and it's a female writer who's writing about female characters and that just makes those characters so real. The name of her book is Wives and Daughters and who even talks about, you know, the wives and daughters when writing a book, right? Whenever you see a book which is written by a male writer, there's just this one female character who's on the very periphery of the story. But with Elizabeth Gaskell, women, are everywhere and whenever i look around us women are everywhere right um, they are the ones who are running families they are the ones who are running homes and their lives what matters the most to them the connections they have with each other are just some of the things which elizabeth gaskell explores in her writing and she does it so brilliantly that i would definitely recommend you pick up her books just looking at the society of the Victorian era through a woman's eye is something you'll find in Gaskell's works. Even thinking about her books is just bringing a smile to my face because they are just about women of all ages and women of all classes and how they interact, how they enjoy each other's company, how they sometimes don't enjoy each other's company. But those are some of the things which we usually don't see in books. So the third author on the list is Anne Bronte. I've been partial to Anne Bronte out of all the Bronte sisters for some reason. Um, I have not enjoyed a lot of what I've read from Charlotte Bronte and Emily Bronte. I don't want to talk about why I did not enjoy her sister's works but I do want to talk about Anne Bronte because she never seems to get enough spotlight. Anne Bronte was the sister of Charlotte and Emily Bronte. She wrote two books, The Tenant of Wildfell Hall and Agnes Grey. Uh, both of the books are about female protagonists. So in Agnes Grey, we have the protagonist Agnes Grey and in The Tenant of Wildfell Hall, we have Helen. I don't know much about what went on in the Bronte household or how things were back then. I do know that Anne was a bit more attached to Emily and the reason why I enjoy her books are because she wrote more realist fiction. Her literary style was ahead of her time. She preferred prose with realism as opposed to the romantic approach of her sisters. It seems that Charlotte had the misapprehension that Anne's realism was an indication of an undeveloped writing ability, which is so rude. Um, so when Anne died, Charlotte instructed their publisher to discontinue printing her work. Um, as a result, Charlotte's and Emily's novels grew in status while Anne's remained relatively obscure. I have given both of her books a 5 star rating on Goodreads. And if you haven't read her books, I would highly recommend you read them. Agnes Grey is the story of this young timid girl who just has to stand up for herself, fight in the world with people who are trying to abuse her and, you know, work on her own. Anne talks about Agnes as though she is this very timid and quiet person but we see that beneath all that shyness and timidness Agnes is a strong woman and she just needed to you know take a step outside and live and when she does that she blossoms and I love that about this book it's just 200 pages long very short very easy to read I read it in one day and I absolutely loved it and then her second book uh, The Tenant of Wildfell Hall just talks about this brilliant topic which I don't feel like I have read in any of the classics. The Tenant of Wild Phil Hall is about this woman and I don't want to give spoilers so if you are like very worried about any kind of spoilers then maybe you should skip over some of the video. The theme which the book discusses is that of domestic abuse. Helen, the character, is a very strong woman and she takes a stand for herself and her son and she leaves a husband, a marriage which was abusive. 
and she did that in the Victorian era when women did not do such things. She wanted a divorce but they couldn't get a divorce easily and so Helen just decides to you know change her name, change her identity and leave you know just run away and live somewhere else where she could live you know as a new person because she does not think that it's healthy for herself and for her son to you know live in that um, toxic place. Anne Bronte who was the very quiet sister wrote about such an important topic. This book was an eye-opener so I'm definitely all pro Anne Bronte. Maybe I should read more non-fiction about the authors I read works of. I am hesitant in picking up non-fiction and I feel like I might not want to know all about one person's life. I wish there was like a film based on the life of the Bronte sisters so that would make my life so much easier. I'd learn about my favorite authors without having to read non-fiction about them. So the second author on the list and I was really confused about which author to pick. I absolutely love both the authors on the list um, but I'm gonna go with um, George Eliot. She's going to be my second female favorite author classics. I mean I'm not even sure what the title is but she is an amazing amazing female classic writer. I don't know much about her life but I usually read the introduction to get to know the author a bit more and it says that George Eliot, um, by the way, she used a pseudonym. This is not her real name. She wasn't George. I thought George Eliot was a guy for ages. So George Eliot wrote towards the end of her career and her life when she was established as England's foremost living novelist. Though her belief in the importance of early memories remained constant and determined the settings of her early fictions, it was a commitment sustained in the face of a long experience of social alienation and family rejection. The things I do know about George Eliot are that she lived out of wedlock and that caused a lot of problems with her father. I want to talk about the books by George Eliot which I would like to recommend and of course it's going to be Middle March by George Eliot. I don't have the physical copy with me so that's why I'm holding Adam Bede which is another of her works which I've read. Middle March is the study of a provincial life and George Eliot actually studies all the characters of her story. The narrator of the story is so intelligent and hint it's George Eliot. She knows about her character's weaknesses and their strengths, why they're saying something, why they're not saying something, why they want to marry this person, why they don't want to marry this person, why they're not happy in their marriages, why they regret the life decisions they have made. When you're reading Middle March, you feel like, oh, the author knows already about why this is happening, but she's going to let me know very soon. And when she does let you know, you're just blown away by the intelligence of the narrator. That's why George Eliot is my favorite, um, second favorite uh, female author. She is intelligent. It's kind of surreal that her books were sold under a man's name and people thought, yeah, that's a guy writing the book, but it was actually her. That was a time when women were not considered to be very intelligent. She actually proved by her writing that women can be really smart. And I feel like she hit the mark. She was the best novelist of the time. She was writing novels which were appreciated by a lot of people. She was famous at the time and she was famous under the name of George Eliot. So I'm just checking on Wikipedia. George Eliot's real name was Mary Ann and she wrote seven novels. Like Charles Dickens and Thomas Hardy, she emerged from provincial England and most of her works are set there. They are known for their realism, psychological insight. Yes, her books have amazing insight, sense of place and detailed depiction of the countryside. Although female authors were published under their own names during her lifetime, she wanted to escape the stereotype of women's writing being limited to light-hearted romances. Alright, so I was wrong. She wasn't married to... Uh, she wasn't living with a guy out of wedlock. Well, maybe she was, but actually the reason why she was doing that is because the guy was already married. Oh my god, the lighting is getting so weird. So the author who's on the top of the list is, drumroll, it's Jane Austen. I started reading classics because of Jane Austen. I read Pride and Prejudice and I fell in love with her writing. I loved the story. I loved the commentary, the humor in her books. I love how she ridicules the concept that 
a single man in possession of a fortune must be in want of a wife. I love the fact that she never got married, but I love that all her books end with the female antagonist being either getting engaged or getting married or having just a happily ever after. I'm sure you guys have heard of her. I'm sure you might have read her books. I have now read all of her major novels and have never been disappointed with them. Um, yes, I've rated a few of them lower than the others, but I still had a good time reading them, right? She is just using that plot, using that story, but she's also pointing out the mistakes, the things which are going wrong there. And she does that in such a subtle and such humorous way, so it doesn't seem offending, it doesn't seem like it's a criticism on marriage or love. Uh, it's just that, you know, she she points out how there can be some sorts of love which are so pure and then there can be a love which can be very selfish. All of her characters are so different and unique. The way she describes them, we have been able to visualize them for years. She's famous for a reason. Her books are read even today because they resonate with us all. And that is why Jane Austen is my favorite classic author of all time. So these were just some of the authors which I absolutely love and wanted to show some love to. So I made the video. And thank you so much for all the suggestions for future videos. From the last couple of months, I've had no idea what to film. And you guys have thrown in some amazing suggestions. So I'm going to make a list of them and I'm going to start working on that list. Um, and also, I want to apologize for The Crow in the background because it has been constantly sitting outside my window through the entire time I was filming. There are some female authors which I would absolutely love to read from soon so that I can, you know, maybe add them onto my list as well. Virginia Woolf, I mean, Mrs. Dalloway is on my TBR for the year. And I'm sure there are so many other amazing, brilliant female writers. Let me know down in the comments some of the authors you suggest I should read from. Share this video with your friends. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it already. I'm going to see you all in my next video very, very soon. Bye. George Eliot for the win. But yeah, George Eliot for the win. <laughs> but George, um, but anyways, George Eliot is amazing and I love her book, Middle March, and that's what I, and that's all I have to say about her. And that's all I have to say about her. Um, I wanted to, I'm not sure why, anyways. <laughs>